Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. So I just want to give a quick shout out to everybody. Thank you. We finally hit 200 subscribers, so we are well on our way to that 1,000 mark. And again, appreciate everybody for stopping by and checking out the channel. And hopefully, you guys are enjoying some of the content. So before we get started today, uh, yes, we are going to be dropping the car for the recall for the head gasket. Now that will be happening probably early February. Uh, I do have an entire week off, so I want to make sure that I have the day uh, in order to sit there and actually film the whole process for you guys. So I'll make sure that I'm doing that on a day that I have a lot of time for that. So other stuff though too, uh, what to look forward to in the channel. Uh, that week that we're doing the, the recall, I'm also going to be doing the intercooler video. So before I drop the car off, I will be taking the blanking plate off the intercooler data log. We're going to do the whole thing for you guys and uh, give you guys some info and kind of see how efficient or inefficient that blanking plate makes the intercooler. So among that though too, if everything goes right, by the end of that week, I am going to also try to install that boost reference adapter. Uh, that's if everything goes well. So we may wait a little bit longer for that if I run out of time. So other stuff as well, really quick before we get to today's video is going to be uh, for the spring. So anybody who's watching, if you guys live in the Northeast, uh, anywhere in New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, uh, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, anywhere in that area, uh, we're gonna be doing some car meets this, this coming spring as soon as the weather gets nice. So if you guys happen to be around, you guys wanna come hang out, you're more than welcome, we'll post some information. Uh, I'll put the info up in you know later videos. Uh, or if you guys wanna also follow my Instagram, it's probably one of the easiest ways to get a hold of me directly. So for today's video, I'm going to actually pose a question for you guys and uh, see what you guys think. Now, is the Focus RS, is it a supercar? Um, I've had this debate a few times, people are kind of talking about it, and I guess you could go either way. Uh, we was talk about from the beginning, you know, like what kind of cars really set what a supercar standard was uh, and talk about the Focus RS. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to walk inside. It's actually really freaking cold out, so... All right, now that we're finally inside, we can kind of get back to where we were, uh, where, I, where I left off. So, is the Focus RS considered a supercar, or can it be considered a supercar? So, um, you know, like I said, I've talked about this with a few other people, and I'd have to say it can kind of be argued either way. Um, so we'll kind of give the following reasons. Now, we got first, we should look at what some of the supercars are. Now, we're going to look at more, obviously, the more, like, entry-level supercars. Um, you know, obviously, over the last, you know, decade or so, uh, you know, what's considered a supercar. I mean, these, you know, these things are insane. Now, you look at, say, the, you know, the Lamborghini Huracan. Um, you know, I mean, these things are pushing a, a lot more horsepower than they used to. So uh, we'll look at some of the entry-level ones. Now, I'm going to say we're going to go with, like, one, you know, the one, we're going to start with one of the first... Nissan GTR. So in 2009, when the GTR came out, uh, that car I think, believe came with like 480 horsepower, somewhere around there. And uh, even we'll compare it with, say, the second generation Ford GT. Now, when that car came out, obviously it had the supercharged V8 and that had uh, 550 horsepower. So, you know, I know a supercar is more than just a horsepower number and figure. Uh, it's a lot about, you know, the drivetrain and, you know, the aerodynamics and the performance of the car. Now, the Focus RS, you know, being what it is from the factory, I think it would only be fair to kind of break this in action into two parts and compare a stock Focus RS and an obviously a tuned Focus RS. So, the stock RS, yes, does come from the factory with 350 horsepower and 350 pound feet of torque. Again, that's pretty good for a turbocharged four cylinder motor. So, the car does come with the all wheel drive system, and as you guys have noticed, a lot of supercars now, uh, you know, including Audi. Lamborghini, Porsche, you know, a lot of these manufacturers are switching to an all-wheel drive system because there are a lot of benefits from the all-wheel drive. So the Focus RS does have that going for it. Now, again, the stock 350, 350. Uh, I, I believe my personal opinion, you guys, please comment down below if you disagree with me. I don't think that a stock Focus RS could be considered a supercar by any means. I think it's just it's just underrated. It doesn't have the, the horsepower numbers. It's just it just isn't quite there. Now, on the other side, though, we are going to talk about, say, a tuned Focus RS. So, a full bolt-on, tuned, probably on E85. Um, these cars are pushing right around 400 wheel horsepower. So, if you do the math for an all-wheel drive system, calculating about a 22 to 25% drivetrain loss, that's almost 500 crank horsepower. And that's talking, that's singing a different tune right there. So, you know, when you start talking about a car that has almost 500 horsepower and an all-wheel drive system, uh, that you know does pretty pretty aggressive uh, you know torque vectoring you know not only from the front but also to the rear it's a pretty lethal combination so you know again now you're looking at say a tuned RS with almost 500 horsepower and all-wheel drive now 
comparing that again to say a stock GTR or say even close to maybe a stock Ford GT 2004-2005 obviously. Uh, you know, I think this could be argued on either side. Now, again, yes, it is tuned, it's not stock, so some people are going to be like, well, that doesn't count. You could soup up, uh, you know, any car, Honda Civic or a Geo Metro. Yeah, it's actually a thing. Um, and, you know, you can make that almost a supercar. But in my opinion, I think that a tuned, full bolt-on Focus RS is so borderline for being a supercar. It is so close. Um... I don't know. I mean, I have to. I, I'm curious what you guys think. You know, if you have one that's almost 500 horsepower, I mean, that's an that's an insane number. You think about it, out of a four-cylinder motor. Uh, you know, that's just a, it's a crazy th to think about. Um, you know, I mean, what what do you guys think? I mean, I, I I'm curious to see what people what people think. Of, you know, if this would could almost be considered one or not. So I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. I'll give you my opinion. I think a tuned one is at the border. Um, I'm not really sure if I would necessarily call it a supercar even when it's tuned, but I would say it's pretty damn close. So anyway guys, leave your comments down below, I'm curious what you all think. And uh, again, thank you guys everybody for tuning in and for subscribing. Uh, we're well on our way to our goal of 1,000 subscribers by the end of the summer. And uh, again, if you guys are here and it's your first time, if you guys like any of the content or if you have some suggestions about stuff, uh, go ahead and leave that down below and hit that subscribe button. And uh, again, I appreciate you guys stopping by, and we'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.